Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I'd like to take a minute or so first to read a splendid letter from Mrs. N.C.S. of Akron, Ohio. It may prove helpful to mothers of young children who haven't heard about Horlicks yet. She writes, I have been using Horlicks malted milk for six weeks and have found that there is no other milk that can equal Horlicks for infant feeding. Before I gave Horlicks to my baby daughter, aged three months, I couldn't find any other milk to agree with her. After trying several brands, I decided to give Horlicks a chance, having heard about it on your broadcast. I noticed a change at once, after only a second feeding. She began to gain about a pound a week. I urge any mother who's in doubt about what to feed her infant to try Horlicks. Well, thank you, Mrs. NCS. We're glad to hear you speak so well of Horlicks. And I'd like to suggest that all mothers keep a package of Horlicks on hand in the home. It has so many uses. You can get it, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening (laughs) down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, Lum met the new bareback rider with the circus. And immediately made up his mind that he and Abner should travel with the show. (laughs) They have been busy all day making preparations to leave Pine Ridge. And as we look in on the old fellows now, Abner is at home packing. And we find Lum waiting down at the Jotham Down store, telling Grandpappy Spears all about the beautiful bareback rider that he met yesterday. Listen. No, sir, Grandpappy, it's the beatenest thing i ever seen in my life. Now, you say she jumps from one of them horses to the other and them in a dead run? Yes, sir, running round and round the ring. Then she'll stand up there on her, on her backs on one toe while they're running, mind you. And I do know. Oh, it's wonderful. Then she'll jump down and sort of cut across the ring and hop right back up there again. <laughs> you just order to see her. Uh, what did you say her name was again? Zenora. That's a foreign name. I think she said she was an Egyptian. Her mom and papa is kings over, I think. Wherever that's at. Uh, it's a wonder to me they'd let her travel around with her circus that way. Well, she told me that she never had to do it for a living. She just loves uh, circus life so well. Yeah. That's right. I believe you're getting sort of struck on her, ain't you, Lum? Who, me? Well, that's all you've talked about all day long. Well, <laughs> I don't know as I'd go so far as to say that. Whilst uh, me and her understands one another all right. Just seems like I've known her always. She says I've got such understanding eyes and all. Fine a little woman's I ever got acquainted with, Grandpab. Now, uh, when I told her I was going to start traveling around with the circus, she'd just tickle from to death. <laughs> uh, well, what about Evelina? What does she say about you going on the road with that circus? Well, I ain't told her nothing about it yet. I know it's going to be such a shock to her, I just hate to break the news to her. Uh, here before you left yesterday, you said you just flatly refused to leave Pine Ridge to go at the show on account of Evelina. Then you got back last night, you couldn't wait to get your things all packed and back over there. Yeah, that was funny how I changed all of a sudden that way. <laughs> I reckon I must have been talked into it. Squire and Abner must have did it. Well, I'll run the store for you the best I know how, Lum. Of course, things are sort of quiet right here at planting time. Yeah, well, you just take charge and run it like as if it was your own. If anything important comes up, you want to get my opinions on, why, you can always know where to call me at. I'll let you know every time we move. Uh, how long you aiming on staying there in Belleville? Why, they're moving tonight. And pulling stakes right after the show tonight. It's going to open up in Charleston tomorrow. Got to be in there in time to put on the parade by noon. Cedric's already in there putting up posters and window cards and letting them know we're coming. Uh-huh. Uh, Cedric going to be with you all the time, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. It just reminds me, too. I've got to call up his mama and tell her not to worry about him. He told me to. She was sort of uneasy about him joining up with her circus that way. I don't reckon Cedric's ever been away from home before. That is to speak of. No, I expect this is about to... Wait a minute. Hello? Uh, Miss Wee Hunt? Uh, this here's Lum Eddards talking. Yes, Mom. Why, I just wanted to call you up and tell you not to be uneasy about Cedric. Uh, we'll take good care of him and see you after. Yes, Mom, me and Abner both going with him. Uh-huh. Well, I wouldn't worry about him tall now. He'll be in good hands, and it'll give him a chance to meet some mighty nice people, show people and all. 
Yes, Mom. Well, I'll make him write to you once in a while. Oh, well, I'll write for him myself, then. All right, Miss Weehan. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Goodbye. Be hmm. that's Abner coming up out there now, Mom. Yeah, good. Fine, we can get started then. Yeah, it looks like he's already he's got his hand satchel there with him. Well, it's took him long enough. He ought to have been ready long ago. Swan, I've spent half my life waiting for that fella. Hurry up, Abner. You're poking along there like we had all day. What's been keeping you? Huh? Where you been all afternoon? I've been sitting here waiting for you for three hours. Well, I had to wait till Pearl got done ironing some shirts for me, and and Elizabeth was just bound and determined to give me a haircut. For goodness sake. Now then, my hat's too big for me. Yeah, I thought that looked like it's setting down on your ears there a little more than common. Yeah, uh, Grandpappy, have you got any lamp wicks here in the store that I can sort of pad the inside of this hat with? Yeah, I think there's something back here somewhere, Captain. Let me see. Yeah, bring about a half a dozen of them. Granny Elizabeth might not appeal you, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Just look at that. Yeah, she got to crying about me leaving. Couldn't half see what she's doing. Just might not cut it all off. Crying, huh? Yeah, her and Pearl are both awful tore up for it now. Yeah, just wait till I tell Evelina I'm going. Then you will see some crying showing up. Ain't you told her she was going yet? No, I've been putting it off all day. I know it's going to break her little heart, and I, I don't know. I just can't bring myself to tell her. Yeah, well, I know how you feel about it, Mom, but you ought to call her before we leave and tell her goodbye and all that, you know. Yeah, I know it. I've just been putting it off and putting it off. I wish I could just write her a note and tell her I'm leaving. Write her a note? Yeah, a letter. No, oh, no, I wouldn't do that, Mom. That wouldn't be right. You ought to go over there and tell her yourself. That's well, plain. I just her. can't stand to hear a woman cry, though, Abner. I know in reading she's going to just break right down and start begging me to stay and all that. I'm feared she's going to have high spirits. Yeah, yeah. Well, them things are sad, all right. I know that. Little Beth and Pearl are just taking on something wonderful. Here, Abner, let me have your hat. I'll fix it for you. Four is all we have, but I believe that'll be plenty. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you, Grandpa. That ain't enough. We can put some newspapers in there. You look like a picked goose, Abner. Yeah. Well, uh, She must have just tied a string around your head and just cut down all the hair off of the underneath the string. Well, that's the way she always does, you know. Just puts a string up over my ear and then cuts all the hair off below it, you know. Yeah, there's one thing about it, though. It ought to last me for a while. Yeah, there now, Abner. Try that. Yeah, yeah, much better. Yeah, now, that's a heap better. Yeah, I, I can see out mother it this way. Emma, yeah. you ought to went to the barber shop and got Moe's Moose to give you a regular sure enough haircut. Well, I don't know, Mom. Lady Beth just says there ain't no sense in throwing money away when she can do this as good a job as Moe's. Yeah, but if you're going around at the circus, the folks are going to be pinting you out as one of the owners and here they won't know what you belong to the side show. Well, what's the matter with this haircut? The hair's off. That's the main thing, ain't it? Well, My ears are sticking out. Get away from here. If you're ready now, Emma, I'll call Evelina. I don't want to call her until just before we leave. Well, I'm ready as far as I know. Yeah, I waited all that day on you. I wanted to be sure. Next time we go anywhere, I want you to start packing your stuff about two days beforehand. Yeah, well, I've been sitting down here ever since noon waiting for you, Abner. Well, uh, why do you call an Evelina then, Lom? I can be loading this stuff in the car. Yeah, take it on out there and get it loaded up so we won't waste no more time we have to. I'll get Evelina right now. Yeah, uh, where's your things at? I'll load them, too. What? Huh? Uh, where's your valise or hand satchel or whatever you're taking your duds in? Well, I'll uh, sworn to goodness. I, Granny's, I ain't packed it yet. Ain't packed it yet? Well, sure, I've sat here and forgot all... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello? Oh, the goodness, ball me out first. Sister Simpson? I'm going out the car and load this up, Granny. Uh, let me speak to Evelina, please, Mom. She ain't. Well, I'm leaving town. I just wanted to call her up and tell her goodbye. Oh, she did? Who told her? Well, I hate that. I wanted to sort of break the news to her general. Yeah, more than likely somebody just come right out flat-footed and say, and Lum's leaving town. Yeah, I reckon she was terrible tore up over it, wasn't she? Uh, well, she just didn't want to let on, more than likely. Uh-huh. Well, when she gets back, tell her that I called and try to keep her from feeling too bad about it, Sister Sampson. Yeah, tell her I'll write to her. Ah. Uh, she didn't say where she is going, did she? Ah. Uh, all right, Sister Simpson. Thank you, Mom. And don't forget to tell her goodbye for me. Uh, all right. Goodbye. She weren't there, huh? No, she 
said she wasn't, but more than likely she's up in her room crying, couldn't bear to talk to me. Somebody had done told her I was going. Well, poor little thing. That's a trouble with having somebody in love with you. Got to be so careful else you'll break their heart. Where's Abner? Now, he went out to load that stuff in his car. Here he comes. Hey, Long, you, you never got ever leaning on a telephone, did you? No, she was crying over me leaving and couldn't talk to me. Crying? Yeah. <laughs> She never looked like she's crying to me. When did you see her? Why, she just now went by out front there just now. Well, why didn't you stop her so I could tell her goodbye? Where's she at? Well, she was out driving with Frank Forster and laughing and talking. Looked like she's having such a good time, but I didn't believe she'd want to stop. Wait a minute here. Frank Forster. That snake in the weeds. I don't know where I'm going to leave or not, Abner. Well, I recollect you told Zenora we'd be there late this evening. Yeah, that's right. Zenora. I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, Evelina's indifference toward Lum's leaving seems to have the old fellow rather worried. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our scene changes as we take you off to Springfield, Illinois. The Websters are resting after dinner in their home. Let's listen to them. Oh, Tom. Yeah? I'm worried. What about? Eddie, Tom. He's he's lost his appetite. Oh, oh he's all right. It's just the time of year. Well, I'm not so sure. He scarcely touched his breakfast. Oh, well, he'll make it up tonight. I suppose, but he ought to eat more in the morning now that he's out in the open so much more. He must have a reason, though. He says he's tired of milk. We never liked it much, you know. I, I don't think it agrees with him. Well, give him coffee, then. Oh, you know he's not supposed to have it. Well, why not Horlicks, Jane? Horlicks malted milk for breakfast? Hot. Say, I never thought of that. Takes me to think of something. <laughs> you? <laughs> That's the first good tip I ever heard you give. Well, I like that. Why, only the other day... <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> it is a good idea, though, and I know he'll go for Horlicks, too. Get a package, then. Tell you what, we'll all have Horlicks in the morning. I need to change myself. And that's a good idea, folks. Horlicks malted milk for breakfast sure is a welcome change from milk and tea and coffee. It's energizing, too. Gives you the pep that you need so much this time of year. You'll feel much better if you start the day with Horlicks. So always keep a package on hand. This is Carlton Pricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.